Hello. So in this lecture, we will cover uh, reactions on surfaces. So surface chemistry plays a very important role in uh, especially the indoor environments. This helps in determining the composition of indoor air in a lot of indoor environments. In general, surface reactions can act as a source and also sinks of indoor air species. For example, um, some species are formed in the air and they may deposit down. Some species may be formed when uh, you know gases such as ozones react with for example some organic layer on the surface and then uh, you know it leads to a chain of reactions of produce production of uh, radicals which then lead to the formation of secondary organic aerosols. Now the secondary organic aerosols depending on their size may stay in the air or may be deposit down back to the surface but so this thing becomes a bit complex. Surface reactions are quite important compared to outdoors because there is a much large surface area to volume ratio available in surface. In outdoor air as I said in one of the previous lectures we have like full open air with some dust particles. So in let's say 1 meter cube of open air we will have some number of dust particles but when we come indoors we have 1 meter of 1 meter cube of air but we could have dust particles we could have different surfaces right so if we are looking at a 30 meter cube room we still have outdoors for that 30 meter cube in outdoor we will have some number of particles but for that 30 meter cube of volume in the indoor environment we will have a wall on four sides we will have a ceiling we will maybe have cha table chair water bottles mobile phones uh, you know laptops keyboards and the keyboard surfaces will be filled uh, you know uh, they would have oil maybe or some biological material from our fingers then we could have furnishings so there are a lot of different surfaces with a lot of area available therefore surface reactions are actually important in the indoor environment For example, in a nominal surface area for a 30 meter cube, we will have 60 to 90 meter square of area available for a reaction. This generally includes furnishings and it can be even of higher magnitude if we take into account the surface roughness or the porosity of the material. For example, if we have a carpet on the floor. The carpet has area but carpet is more a porous type of material. So we will have an area to volume ratio of 2 to 3 meter square per meter cube indoors compared to 0 0.01 meter square per meter cube outdoors. So if we see a ratio it is about 100 to 300 times more ratio uh, 100 to 300 times more area to volume ratio in an indoor environment compared to the outdoor environment. We can have small rooms with very fleecy surfaces such as curtains and carpets as I mentioned and these will have even higher uh, you know surface area to volume ratios. For example, For a nominal surface area of carpet of 10 meters square, when we account for the depth of the pile, roughness and porosity, our uh, available surface area could be 1000 meters square. So the actual available area in a carpet is 100 times more compare 1000 to 10. So we have 100 times more uh, available area. I will check. Okay, so we will have uh, about 100 times more surface area available than the actual area of the carpet which implies in a place such as bedroom we will have more surface area 
and hence a bedroom will be more important for surface reactions compared to an office of the same dimension because office will not have carpet of uh, office will not have like a bed sheet on the floor or a pillow mm, i will check if the point So ozone uh, concentrations in the house have been shown to decrease rapidly once the doors and windows were closed so this we already know so when the ozone was well so ozone generally indoors are anyways less than the ozone outdoors and once we close we can have probably lot of surface reactions happening so rubber fabrics and plastics will decompose decompose ozone basically means ozone will react with the chemicals on the surface of this uh, material and therefore the ozone gets consumed much more rapidly and in rubbers fabrics and plastics this reactions happen faster than on surface such as metals and glass also increasing either the humidity or the temperature will enhance the rate of ozone decay meaning the enhance the rate of ozone reactions the deposition velocity of ozone on surfaces varies widely depends on this surface the age of the surface and the measurement technique and the environmental conditions people have found that a uh, velocity on hard furniture could be as low as 0.07 into 10 to the power minus 4 cm per second this is on hard furniture and this is apparently a very low velocity when looking at all the surfaces the highest velocity for deposition was found on a painted wall and it was 0.68 cm per second which is a very reasonable uh, um, uh, magnitude of deposition velocity on the wall surfaces different types of surfaces uh, behave differently in terms of the propensity to foster reactions or you know uh, promote deposition when they are new but when they are old over time they sort of lose their top new layer and they all become more uh, soilish let us say after time and so the surfaces become much more similar to each other in terms of reactivity so these surfaces are different when they are new but over time they behave more similarly in terms of reactivity so one is they will lose their shine the other is they will get same kinds of coatings so this could be like skin oils or flakes or emissions of fats from cooking chemicals from cleaning and that particles that are deposited from the air so now the particles that are depositing from the air or the oils that we are using are the same and all of these things will deposit on to all kinds of surfaces so over time the surface top layers become the same so they behave uh, similarly in terms of reactivities now chemical reactions in indoor surface can lead to other secondary species right as we have seen uh, so ozone with reacting with relatively non volatile compounds in carpets such as styrene and four phenyl cyclohexane can produce aldehydes which include formaldehyde acetaldehyde and benzaldehyde we have already seen how formaldehyde reacts to the production of radicals ozone reactions with latex which is vinyl polymer based uh, paint uh, produces aldehydes ketones and organic acids now ozone can react with almost any surface constituent or soft compound that will contain unsaturated carbon bonds and therefore ozone can react with almost anything and the products of such reactions can continue to dissolve even after the reactions has happened with the exposure to ozone so even when the ozone is gone the reactions will still happen so depending upon the indoor concentration of ozone and the occupancy rates the concentrations of secondary oxidation products can be very different 
the indoor surfaces can enhance the concentrations of nitrated organic materials also the surface emissions can change the nature of the nitrated organic compound for example from alkyl nitrate we can have peroxyacetyl nitrate type species being uh, there water helps in the surface production of nitrous acid so surfaces with low tendency to absorb water which for example is our non stick cooking material teflon they will have a lower propensity to form nitric acid and this uh, you know lower propensity compared to the material which have higher tendency such as wallpaper surfaces that can store water for longer period will also act as a nitrous acid reservoir and therefore even after the no2 concentration has decreased the hono will continue to be released from the stored water also hono concentrations are likely to be higher in households that use unvented gas combustion with reasonably high humidity levels and contain surfaces that can absorb water from the air also it is been found that moisture level and the resulting surface ph or surface ph can have also impacts on sur surface reactions both inorganic and organic acids and bases can partition from the gas phase onto the water on surface and on particles and thus the this basically results in uh, different kinds of products being formed so in general we can say the surfaces provide effective reservoirs for indoor pollutants allowing them to undergo chemical transformations over days or weeks before the product is re-emitted from the surface as an example reduced nitrogen species involved with third and tobacco smoke which is the tobacco smoke as a refresher tobacco smoke that has sobbed on internal surfaces and it is released much after the tobacco smoking event has taken place so such reduced nitrogen species which were involved in this third hand tobacco smoke they could partition from indoor surfaces to the gas phase and then undergo reactive uptake into the aerosol phase via acid base chemistry so since we are talking about reactions on surfaces we have to also talk about reactions on people because we are also having a lot of surface area and we actually do influence indoor air chemistry presence of people indoors has been shown to relate with a decrease in ozone concentration and an increase in voc and the secondary organic aerosol concentration it was reported that a single human occupant in experimental conditions in a typical 30 meter square room can remove almost 10 to 25% of the ozone in that room so there is a very appreciable impact of people being on ozone and driving the surface reactions so reactions on surfaces of people generally occur because the skin oil contains a whole suite of compounds such as esters glycerols fatty acids squalene uh you know esters which are not wax esters then sterols with unsaturated carbon bonds and these fatty acids or other compounds can go ozonolysis to form different types of compounds now once emitted these products can undergo further reaction for example additional emissions of aldehydes into indoor space can then influence the distribution of organic nitrates also the chemistry of an empty room is different than uh, you know an occupied room because people are bringing different surfaces different kinds of uh, you know oils or oil with different kinds of substances in rooms with less or more occupants uh, there will be difference in indoor chemistry also in rooms with different uses so all these things will you know affect the chemistry of the room with this uh, we can summarize the topics covered in this week uh, in this particular lecture we have covered the reactions on surfaces 
and previously we have done basics of chemical reactions outdoor indoor differences in chemistry of uh, air and covered some important radicals and reactions such as OH radicals nitrate radicals ozone terpene reactions so with this we conclude the uh, theory of this uh, week